Thank you for joining us this evening so that we can celebrate all the curb appeal that you have worked so hard to do for our town, especially helping us to beautify it. I would be remiss, however, if I didn't mention all the people that we see on a daily basis who silently walk their dog, who jog, who pick up litter and bring it home. These are unsung heroes that we never get to celebrate. So if you see someone on your daily path or as you're driving by, remember to thank them as well because we never know their names. There are special gardeners in town. If you've noticed uh, around many of the uh, street signs, you will see bulbs, you will see uh, perennials and annuals planted. And these people care for them all during the seasons for gardening. So this is a wonderful thing that we have. And people who we often don't see, but tonight we highlight you and your efforts. And we hope that at some point, you will become ambassadors and share your experiences with others. And we hope you do that by taking these Beautification Award signs and putting them in your front yards so that you could lead by example for not just the people in your neighborhood, but those who walk by and will enjoy your wonderful gardens. So we're very happy about that. Our second thing we hope you do, now, now that you know what the process is, that you might consider next year nominating someone that really demonstrates a wonderful curb appeal and helps, again, to beautify our town. At this point, I would like to introduce our mayor, Laura Hoydig, and we are so fortunate that she is joining us this evening, and she will hand you your awards this evening. So please join me in welcoming her this morning. Thank you. But before we begin, we have a very special presentation that we would like to make to three wonderful former members of our committee who have spent more than 40 combined years of service to the town volunteering on the committee and doing all kinds of activities for us. So I'd like, first of all, Ann Ferris to come up. <laughs> come on up, Ann. Anne is the poster child for the organizing, for um, dedicating, for being a caring gardener, and a committed hard worker who always kept us on task, just to name a few of her finer qualities. So I know they're a little embarrassed to be here, but isn't that wonderful to be able to do that for their all the accomplishments? And when, when this particular committee is one that gets their fingernails dirty. And as the gentleman in the, in the back said, he did all the gardening. I checked his nails, and I know for sure that it was his wife <laughs> is, is the one who really does all of that. So, Anne, on behalf of all of us, we'd like to thank you for everything you've done all these years. <laughs> Next, I'd like to call up Gail Lissio. Gail, a dedicated, knowledgeable gardener who supported the school system in their gardening efforts, decorated planters in town, and always helped regardless of rain, <laughs> extreme heat, and sometimes snow. And if you've ever walked around and looked at the Honor Gardens, you have no idea how much time and effort goes into making it as presentable as it is. So we will miss her very creative insights. So Gail, thank you very much. You. Next we have Florence Kokoruda. Florence, come up. We will always miss that wonderful lilting Irish brogue that shared stories as we labored planting and weeding flowers. Florence never shirked any responsibilities, accepted gardening tasks with a smile, and called all of us friends. So before you, you see talented gardeners, but people who we truly care about and we call true friends. So please give them a good round of applause. We should get a picture for we should get a picture for Noreen. Oh. Well, I should put on my heels. Oh 
I'd like to introduce my co-chair for the Beautification Committee, and this is Donna Caserta. And <laughs> <laughs> now I'd like to call up Jen Riley Young, and we will start our presentation. So we see a lot of happy faces and no groans in the back. Good evening, I'm Jen Riley Young, and I'm here to present a few awards to the, uh, tonight for the 2018 Curb Appeal. The first property is at 20 Brinsmaid Avenue. It's owned by Maria Solomon. It is the award for the most stately property, 2018. You can see this home has a beautifully maintained yard with a marvelous variety of perennial shrubs planted around the house's foundation. You might see that the shrubs have contrasting colors and are surrounded by stones instead of mulch, which offers an additional contrast of the dark plants against the lighter stones. One cannot overlook the marvelous staircases and stone walls as they create the stately style of the approach to the home. Also, the tops of the walls serve to add another place for the container plants, flowers, and lanterns. Finally, the driveway gate matches the home's trim and the white rocking chairs on the landing by the front door. It adds a warm, inviting touch to a cohesive, stately design. It's stunning. Congratulations to Maria Solomon. All right. The next award goes to 45 Federal Street. The owners are Charles and Donna Senkowitz. Did I say that right? Great. Oh, I thought it was you. So this is the Best Reader's Retreat 2018. And this home was nominated by the Senkowitz's proud daughter, Tracy. And so I'm going to use some of her words here. You can see that they put in very hard work year after year to achieve their beautiful garden beds with specimen and flowering trees and shrubs. Annuals planted throughout bring splash, fre ugh, sorry, fresh splashes of color throughout the yard. Uh, there's a bench on which to sit and read the mail, or you could stay longer with a novel, and who wouldn't want to? Um, hence the name of the award, Reader's Retreat. There's a brick walk that brings you to the porch and front door, always adorned by a wreath that changes with and complements the season. Lanterns and pathway lights make it a sp it's special after dark as well. It's a beautiful job, and thank you for your hard work. Come on up.
on the next property tonight is the most improved property 2018. It's at 855 Wilcoxon Ave and the owners are John and Maria Sloatmaker. Any, any homeowner, homeowner can appreciate the commitment of resources when improving the overall look to one's home yard and gardens. It takes time, it takes planning, some funds and effort. All of this comes from one sentiment called caring. Just look at the sweet and charming entryway with the colorful flowers, specimens, and the architectural contrast of the plantings there. The meticulous gardens and walkways are weed-free, which is a feat unto itself, as we all know. The side fencing matches the house's trim. You can see in the lower picture. Uh, offering a lovely backdrop to the hostas, the grasses, and other perennials there, also nicely bordered with various stones. Thank you so much to the slope makers for beautifying your home, your street, and our town. Next up is co-chair Donna Caserta. Good evening, everyone. I just want to remind you, please stay until the end of the, uh, the presentations. We have refreshments and everything. And, um, oh, <laughs> the tall people were ahead of me. <laughs> and um, extra tulips, uh, daffodils and everything for everybody. So please stay. Tonight I have the honor of presenting the awards to Best Secret Garden on Libdell Drive. Are you here? Are the homeowners of Libdell? Wonderful. This garden truly is a secret that is, locked, that is located around a corner on a dead-end street. I came upon it purely by accident as I had taken a wrong turn and was looking for a way back to Huntington Road. When I saw this beautiful home and all its gardens, I knew the wrong turn had been the right turn. When I walked closer, I saw the pond and the beautiful crane structures. I knew I had found a winner. The entire yard is beautifully landscaped with a variety of trees, grasses, and bushes. Everything is in proportion and well-maintained. Even the edge of the driveway has plantings at the foot of, the, of a low stone wall. I don't think, no, I didn't have a picture of the stone wall. The architecture of the home is very interesting with a beautiful front door and a, warm, and a welcoming porch. The stone foundation ties in well with the river rock around the, the um, pond garden and the driveway wall, stone wall. This is one beautiful home surrounded by beautiful creative gardens. And I know I'm gonna say your name wrong. <laughs> Robert and Dorothy Chizowitz, <laughs> thank you for sharing your talent and creativity with all of us. The next house I'm presenting is Most Welcome Property. I don't know how many of you have driven by this house on Main Street by, um, by the Country Club. It really is a showstopper. Um, is the owner here? No, unfortunately, I guess not. Um, I tried several times to get in touch with her, but I noticed that the house is now on the market, but it is beautiful. Um, I don't know what drew my attention first to this house. The herringbone pattern brick walk, the beautiful yellow front door, or the adorable yellow bike with flowers in the basket. As I drove by this beautiful home, I had to stop for a better look. Hard to stop on Main Street where the traffic just keeps coming, so you know, I took my life in my hands. 
When I found a f secure parking spot, I got out and took a few quick pictures and found myself standing there just taking in everything, because no matter where I looked, there was someplace else to look, something else to look at that just captured your eye. Attention was paid to every detail, from the flowering baskets on the front porch to the welcoming sign greeting visitors. The, the lawn was beautifully mowed, the um, bushes were all neatly trimmed, and the plantings along the walk all tended to. I just wanted to walk up the beautiful walk, ring the doorbell, and meet the creator of this beautiful property. This is definitely a well cared for home, one Main Street and the homeowner can be proud of. Congratulations, Valerie Bord Bordelone. I'll have to see if I can get in touch with the realtor and get her that way. The last house I'm going to present is on Sunflower. I just love this house. To me, this is a classic New England styled home. This one is one classy home from the stone paver walk that leads to the beautiful royal front blue door to the New England hydrangeas that just pop with your eye with catching beauty to the well manicured lawn and beds with their pop of color too. This home has its act together. And what is more New England than a white picket fence to add to the overall charm? Clean, crisp, beautiful. Congratulations, Norman and Susan Lance. Best classic New England style. Beautiful home. Thank you. Congratulations. Thanks, Skippy. All your hard work. <laughs> Next up is Patricia. Good evening, everyone. Okay, we're on Matthew Drive now. And I'll tell you, when I went down Matthew Drive, I felt like I hit the mother load because every house in that street is pristine, just beautiful. But I'm gonna concentrate on 117 <clears throat> Matthew Drive. Karen and William Buckley have figured out how to team up to create a lovely home and gardens. She is the vision and he is the brawn. Those are her words. My question is, which of you is responsible for keeping up with the weeds? A profusion of window boxes say, welcome. The foundation planting is set off by a selection of yellow lilies and, the mailbo and a mailbox that looks like a small shed or barn painted to match the door. The muted shades of the house and shutters help to call attention to the door, which is a clear invitation to come and visit. Potted plants set off the small porch. Only a couple of small round bushes line the driveway, thus making it a snap to shovel off the snow. Congratulations, Karen and William Buckley, on the best use of a small space. Okay, we're still on Matthew Drive. As I said, I felt like I hit the mother load when I went down that street. Um, this property is best described as a profusion of creativity. It pays no attention to formality where even veggies are planted in the front. Andrew, the son, wanted a garden. He and his mother built a box and put it in a sunny spot in the front and planted tomatoes, potatoes, carrots, dill, and other vegetables. Andrew, you did a great job. Grass was removed from the front near the street in order to plant bushes and flowers, including hydrangea and other perennials, so grass mowing in a difficult spot is no longer necessary. There is a specimen weeping large at the front and side of the property. This adds a touch of mystery. Olga took a cue from a small village in the Ukraine called Petrokivka, where flowers are painted directly onto the houses. Instead of shutters, Olga painted flowers and vines. She chose only three primary colors and mixed the blues, the reds, and yellows to create lavenders and purples. Let's face it, 
there's not another property in Stratford that incorporates painted flowers on the house, and very few souls would be brave enough to plant tomatoes in the front yard. Congratulations to Olga, James, and Andrew, and the family. Okay. Thanks. Okay, moving off of Matthew and going to Main Street. I don't know how many of you have not had the opportunity to have an ice cream at the Paradise Ice Cream Shop on Main Street, but you should really go because the stuff is really good. All right, there's a story behind the wall. The owner's daughter, who was also an art student at Stratford High, had an idea which she brought to her art teacher, Sarah Vacola. Sarah is one of two art teachers at the high school and works as the advisor for the National Honor Art Society. She designed the artwork and outlined it onto the wall so that the kids could color in the design. It took lots of planning and lots of hours to execute it, sometimes working at night, but the result is stunning. Sarah admits that this was a joint effort and that some from the community pitched in, as did Marie Monk, the second Stratford High School art teacher. My understanding is that some of the kids who worked on the wall also worked on the litter campaign of 2017. They designed the posters that could be seen around town. All in favor of covering all blank walls around town, raise your hands. Congratulations, <laughs> all right, thank you. To Sarah and to everyone who helped to make a dreary, nondescript alleyway into a truly happy place. Sarah. Are you Sarah? Yeah, how are you going to top that? Are you the owner of the ice cream? Oh, I'm yeah. thank, yeah. thank yeah. you for allowing us. It was the right oh, idea. Yeah. It was oh, a great course. idea. It was a great idea. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's see, who's next up here? All right. Hi, I'm Joan Law. I'm new to this committee, and I have to say that they've all been the most welcoming group of women to, uh, to work with and to learn more about um, the, uh, the effects of the Beautification Committee on this town, which is really amazing. And they do really get their nails dirty and are out there on Sunday mornings in the heat and in the cool weather cleaning up Paradise Green. If you saw them out there with the Aquarian workers, it's really, you all deserve a, a great round of applause because it's been very impressive. Um, thank you. So this, I have the uh, fortunate um, 
opportunity to nominate and get to present the award for best first impression for 2018. This is 130 Flagler Ave, Chris and Kim Jacko, who I don't see here today. They have two little ones, so it, it could be why they're not here. Um, this house, I've had the uh, pleasure of seeing them transform this. This was a hidden gem in the neighborhood. It had large hedges covering the front. You couldn't even see the home that was behind it. Since they've uh, moved in, they've taken down all that, um, the bushes opened it up with that welcome home um, walkway, the porch that you just want to go over on their porch swing and hang out. Chris works diligently on his lawn. As I wrote in my notes, he is the envy of the neighborhood and, most li and mostly by my husband who watches him um, mow that lawn in that perfect angle. We're n we can't quite figure out how he does it. Chris has also started to include his son, Ryan, in, and you see Ryan out there with his dad digging, and, and um, he's now pushing that lawnmower, too, and Ryan's about this high, so he's uh, a future Beautification Award winner, I'm sure. But um, this is uh, a great corner lot, and we're very proud to have them as our neighbors, and they are keeping up the, uh, the competition level in our, in our neighborhood. So thank you, uh, Chris and Kim. I will bring them, I will bring them their, their sign and their award. The next award winner that I get to present, also my husband is affected by this because this is the best hidden gem 2018 on 300 Seymour Street. Dave and Sharon Jalbert, are you here? So this little gem was nominated by a uh, Metro North writer who actually is also a town employee. So. Um, this cottage-style home is nestled along the Metro North tracks, and it's a commuter's delight. The pride in ownership shines bright and is a great example that you don't need a lot of space to make a big impact. I'm sure owners David and Sharon would be thrilled to know that their efforts bring a smile to commuters' faces when they catch a glimpse of this on the train as it passes by. We admired the use of the space that you were able to do. We did take note of the Red Sox banner in the uh, yard. Uh, so, uh, you know, you almost lost on that count, but we were... Uh, <laughs> you would never lose from me, David. <laughs> <laughs> we won't say that that was in the, uh, the process of the award, uh, awarding the... Uh, so we want to thank you and invite you up to get your award. So full disclosure, Dave and I worked together for 12 years at Station House Square, and Station House Square, which is 2505 Main Street, um, has received the Beautification Award years past because Dave maintains his workplace just like he maintains his home. It's absolutely beautiful. It was David's idea to put the patio dining out where it now is Old Dog. It was David's idea to create it. When it was Whistle Stop Book, and they had moved that he said we should really take advantage of the outside dining and make the brick walk into an eatery. So we did both sides and that was David. So congratulations, David. Thank you for making Stratford beautiful. Hi, I'm trying to keep up with the cool kids when reading off the phone. <laughs> uh, this award, best use of brand, um, it goes to a relatively new business uh, in town. There was a lot of buzz leading up to the opening of this property. Um, on, the beautification, on the beautification committee, we all agree on how creative they were at incorporating their brand uh, with the whiskey barrels and uh, whiskey-related artwork. Uh, we really admire the rustic vibe, yet very inviting look and feel of the property. And it is my pleasure to present the 2018 Award for Best Use of Brand to the Whiskey Barrel.
Uh, when it came time to nominate properties for the 2018 awards, I was super excited because I just knew the property I had in mind, um, everyone on the committee was gonna love. And I was very excited going home and you know, I stopped, took pictures, trying not to look like a weirdo and you know, getting pictures going home. And I got on the computer and each member on the committee had to nominate something. So I was really excited and I logged on and our co-chair had sent out an email and she had already nominated this property that I've been admiring like every day I have to drive past it, just how pretty and picturesque it looked. And um, she pitied me <laughs> and gave me the honor to um, you know, present tonight. Um, every time I pass, like it, it's a constant reminder, oh yeah, you need to make that you know, chiropractor appointment. <laughs> And then I kept thinking, you know, like, they take such good care of the property, they must take really good care of their patients. So um, I'm looking forward to visiting them. And when I called and spoke to um, Tracy, and she was very, like, adamant about how much care and pride they take into making sure that the property stays pristine. Like, they, they have a landscaper who comes... Uh, you know, on schedule, but they all go out there and they're looking to making sure that there's no trash or debris and if they find anything, they pick it up right away. Um, the property was built in 1935 and it is actually a um, residential and business property, like a multi, what, multi-use, multi, -use? multi <laughs> mixed use. Um, so it is my honor to present this award for best commercial property to Corsello Clinic of Cairo chiropractic. I had the pleasure of sitting with the owner of this property and experience her garden and landscape firsthand. The photos really do not do the property justice. Um, the owners moved there in 1981. They're the second family to live in that home. Uh, it's a lovely home located on the corner of Park Boulevard and Lordship with an amazing peaceful view overlooking the Long Island Sound. The landscape is purposefully done to enhance the natural view. The use of color is beautifully done and fun, um, keeps your eye interesting, keeps your interest going. Uh, the owner gushed about um, their good friend Bill, who helped a lot with maintaining the landscaping because Bill has a great eye for this stuff, <laughs> she says. Speaking with Faith, she describes um, her garden as a therapeutic experience that she likes to have um, enjoy while enjoying her coffee um, in the mornings. Uh, it's my pleasure to present this award for Best Corner Property to William and Faith McDivitt at 544 Park Boulevard. I just want to thank you for mentioning my helper. When you get to be this age, you need help. And Bill has been wondrous for us. So. All of us need help, don't we? <laughs> Anyhow, thank you. <laughs> oh. What the committee tries to do is identify homes in all the different districts in town. So you saw a wonderful patchwork quilt of fabulous homes in different areas, commercial, private, north, south, end, east, west. And we hope that when I mentioned before that you become ambassadors, that you help us next year by identifying properties that have that curb appeal essence that you just showed us. 
I'm privileged today, uh, this evening to identify a multi-story home. I normally just try to find commercial properties, and I watch them through all the seasons to see whether or not they do anything in the fall, winter, spring, summer. So I uh, diverted a little. As I walk every morning, I pass this corner home in Lordship, 153 First Avenue, Jamie Gelder's residence. What these photos for all the, the homes that you saw today, what you don't see are the intricacies of the plantings. Behind the fence where there is parking, the roses were just spectacular. Everyone had a seating area. The area where the garbage cans uh, were placed were covered with wonderful perennials. On the side, you will notice at the time there were wonderful irises growing, there were um, perennial bushes in bloom, the front steps are very inviting with plants on the second floor and third floor. And most people just walk down the street, it's a corner residence, and you look inside and you think, who can manage all of this, a multi-home dwelling? So if 153 First Avenue is here. Would you come up and be recognized for the fantastic job that you've done? I guess they're not here today. <laughs> well, they're missing a wonderful opportunity and we'll have to drop this off to them. <laughs> Next, this is, I'm really excited about pollinator paradise and that says it all because our town is in a wonderful fly path for not just birds but pollinators all over and and at this point this is the Audubon Center at Stratford Point they have accomplished a phenomenal task with just a few people working there but yet they have a group of volunteers that planted magnolias, uh, a variety of trees on either side of the entrance. As you're going in, you see they're doing the same thing, creating habitat for all the wildlife that has all of a sudden appeared in our little community. I do not know enough about birds. You know, I go to Long Beach, I check on the piping plovers and all of that, but when you take a walk at the Audubon Center along the bluffs and you look at the wonderful reef balls that are helping to improve Short Beach and, and add more marsh property and habitats for wildlife, this is so important. You will see a variety of wildflowers in the field. Next to the house is a beautiful pond, and may I just say a lot of it was donated, <laughs> with wonderful perennials and annuals, and you see so many varieties of birds. It is just a pleasure for all of the sentence just to stand there for a minute, listen to the sounds of the water and the sounds that the birds make, and also the rustling of all the greenways, of all the grasses and the plants. So if you have not had an opportunity, and this weekend there's a wonderful program about Stratford, not just the Audubon Center, but also the, the um, Shakespeare area and also going up to the Roosevelt Forest. But you will have the opportunity to see, I believe, uh, raptors at the Audubon Center. So at this point, I would like to introduce Corey Folsom O'Keefe. I have that right, yes. It's just a treat to go in there and sit down and talk to these knowledgeable people who are so receptive to an input from anybody who is walking by. And if you ever have a few minutes to volunteer, this is the place to go. Meet some wonderful people and just decompress and let your senses take over and know that you have done a good thing. So Corey and I'm sorry I forgot your name. Seven? Come on up. So everybody knows, we'll be open for uh, Stratford Forest to Shore Day from 9 to 5 this Saturday. So come on by and check us out.
we have to thank you. Thank you. I don't see our next recipient, but it is, if you look, they're a Girl Scout group, Mrs. Bada's Girl Scout, Girl Scout troop. And we're thrilled that Mrs. McDevitt, a recipient from uh, Park Boulevard, wore her yellow today. And that's because we are the Daffodil Town. So you received little houses filled with Dutch master daffodil bulbs. And in the past, we have dona we donate that to everyone. So you met our mayor today. She will have a basket in her office and we just pass them out. And we hope that you use them in your curb appeal in your homes. Now we have done this for many, many years. So when Corey came up just now from Audubon, we gave them over 300 bulbs over the years. And if you were ever there in March and early April, you will see them in your entrance way into the Audubon Center. And we hope that today that you take these and plant them as well. And we will also have them at the library and also at the Senior Center. And they're just for you to take and hopefully plant and enjoy in the springtime for anybody passing by. So unfortunately, I think Girl Scouts are not here. And we want to thank them because what they did, they took up the banner took the bulbs, asked for more, and went to all the medians in town and planted them. Now, if you've ever driven by, oftentimes they're filled with um, things people discard from the car, you'll see weeds, etc. So they took time to remediate those very difficult areas and planted daffodil bulbs. And we are so appreciated, appreciative of that. Now, Mrs. Bada, who is the Girl Scout leader, is also a set designer. And unfortunately, she oftentimes has very long hours. So I'm sure that's the reason why she's not here. But let's give a round of applause for her anyway and the Girl Scouts. <laughs> now we have um, Donna coming up for just a few more uh, announcements. We do have refreshments, and we'd like to meet each and every one of you if we haven't done so already. Please take the sign and put it in your front yard proudly so everybody can see it. And don't forget to be an ambassador for the beautification of our town. Thank you. Just a couple of more things. I just want to remind you that the Beautification Committee is not just do doing the beautiful houses. We also like it when you decorate at Christmas time for the holidays. We are the ones who go around and judge. Did you see this in the calendar on page six this, this week when it came out? We are the, the group, the committee that goes and judges. After the town has judged, we pick the top 10 and we go around and pick the top three winners. <laughs> So please, decorate your house, nominate your neighbors, your friends, whatever, get them to vote lots of times, although I think they can only do it once from their computer. But um, vote and decorate and see if you can win a prize. Wouldn't that be wonderful? We have fun doing it that night. It's usually cold and we want a little bit more hot toddy, but um, we managed to get around and, and do it. Um, we would be remiss as a beautification committee if we didn't take this time to do a very special thank you to our audiovisual person, Rita, who's sitting here, who puts together this whole program for us. None of us have the technical skills to be able to do this. She comes around, she drops, and we go, Judge, she takes pictures. I took pictures again of. 855 Wilcox and after things had bloomed, she had already had the program done. I sent her new pictures. She redid them so you got the more updated pictures. I was sending her pictures all the time. Oh, I just saw this, I just saw that. I don't know how many additions or edits she had to do to this program to get it finished. But Rita, we love you and we thank you and we really appreciate your work. And this is for your garden. 
okay? You can put that in your, your, your beautiful yard. Um, okay, also, <laughs> there's another big festival that happens in this town in October. It's called the Pumpkin Festival. This year it will be on October 20th at Booth Park, like it always is. We have lots of things um, lined up this year. Don't forget that there is a scarecrow contest where you bring your scarecrow already done and you set it up uh, at Booth Park and we have judges who judge the first three people, the best will get a prize. We have a pie baking contest. You bring the pies, you don't bake them there. <laughs> you bring the pies and we have a select group of judges that will judge all of the pies and there will be three prizes awarded for that also. We have a pumpkin carving contest. Um, I have to say, for the last X amount of years I've been involved with it, the same pe three people keep winning the carving and the pump and the pie contest, and it's the same guy that wins the pie and the carving. I think he t carves the pumpkin and makes his pies. I'm not quite sure, but anyway, let somebody else come. We get 30 carvers, and they are beautiful. If you've never been to the Pumpkin Festival, please come, bring your kids. We have a children's costume parade that starts at 3.30, so you organize, when you come in and you buy your tickets, you sign up for that. We have face painting by Sarah Vacola's students. Um, we have all kinds of games and jump houses and, you know, all kinds of wonderful, I think we're gonna have the Falconeer again there this year. So please come and see what we have to offer. They let, miss anything, Lou? Did they miss anything? Okay. Um, I think, oh, please, we have extra bags of daffodils here. Please help yourself and please remember to take your lawn sign with you. Um, they're all along the way, and if there aren't enough, we have more, okay? And put them in your yard proudly and encourage your neighbors to pick up their yards and your people to pick up their litter. Thank you so much. Have a great evening. Congratulations. <laughs>